In this tutorial I am going to show you not only step by step how I created this coffee shop menu but also explain the techniques that I used. Coming right up! So as I've told in the beginning I'm going to show you step by step how I created this project. First we created a new project and then I'm, we are going to scan the scene. So let's see what settings I'm going to use. First of all I'm going to use a full scan, three exposures because I want the most of, of what the scanning can do for us and then I'm going to pick camera scan. Why I'm going to do that? As you can see here we have a very shiny surface on which the bottle of wine and the coffee bag is sitting. So very effective surfaces create problems in scanning. The camera mask allows us to fix some of these issues by creating an area of what we want to be scanned and telling light form to ignore this shiny area right here. This will improve our scanning. So this is the scan. Right now what we can do is assess what we have. And we can think of with the brightness, the whole feeling and the effect edges. For me this is quite good. And as you can see here we have complete no information on the top and on the bottom as we will like because we use a mask when creating this scan. Now the first thing before starting a project in my opinion is to have a plan to see what you want to achieve in, at the end. For this project my inspirations were coffee shops menu as you can see in many places and I wanted to create something more dynamic because only projecting static coffee bar menu is not something that you want Lightform for. You want to take it to another level. And as you can see, I already created uh, for this imaginary coffee shop. It's called Coffee and Wine. It's an AM PM um, menu bar menu and uh, we are going to use it by creating an am slide and a pm slide and each of those will going to emphasize the am we're going to be emphasizing the coffee menu and the pm menu I'm going to emphasize the wine menu so first i'm going to import my um logo for this imaginary coffee shop one created with Photoshop and I exported transparent PNG as you can see here. I'm going to open it and here I am going to create a rectangle. Position it as much as I can to be in the middle and then I'm going to insert it right here. Now, as you can see, we need to make sure that the logo stays uh, inside the surface that we created. So for that, I'm going to use shift and clicking on these corners, I am going to reduce the size, but also make sure that I'm not going to distort the proportions because otherwise this is what we get. So always use shift if you want to minimize it so for me i think this looks good i am going to use this as my base and let's see how this looks right so the plan is to for the am slide there should be two boxes here Kind of similar and uh, one should be for example for the am it will emphasize the coffee bag 
it will have the coffee menu and on this side we are going to put some video regarding coffee because video is the most exciting and easy thing we can do in order to emphasize uh, that we have a light form and not just a simple bar menu so i'm going to see what uh, my disparity map also has so i'm going to sh click d and as you can see i don't have very much data here so i'm going to stick to my color I'm going to choose the magic brush focus here and the plan is to create two surfaces one for the bag itself and one for the label so i'm going to start here this is where i went too far and i'm going to click ctrl z which is the undo button and in my opinion you should always take it just one step at a time because as you can see here if i'm going to undo it will only undo this part otherwise if i just created everything in a single motion and i just made a mistake then when i undo i undo all of my progress so little steps in order to make the most of the undo command okay this 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 looks decent now what i can do is i'm going to go here and select the brush tool i'm going to put in a remove state this is the minus and i'm going to remove this so what i want to do is try to make the most of it right here and then maybe and then definitely we are going to use the preview and make it pixel perfect because as i told in one of my previous videos that's how you are going to create the most out of it so don't try to skip on the details because those are the most important and if you want to find out more i'm going to put the link uh, in the right top corner and also in the description down below regarding that video and now uh, we are going to preview and see so for that we're going to use masks video stream off this will not matter in this case and apply to see what we have so that is quite good and now for the label itself i am going to use something a little bit different and by that i mean i'm not going to trace it perfectly because i already traced the outer part of the label so we're going to use the brush tool I'm gonna press the B on the keyboard. It's quite big. And then all we want to do is make sure that it covers the area that we need. And we don't need to worry about the edges because here is what we're going to do. We are going to put these surfaces also this is very very important because we're going to work with so many surfaces it's such a good practice to name them so this will be our logo this will be our coffee bag and this will going to be our coffee label and let's apply some effects so as i told you before we are we want to create highly impactful animations but we don't want to make them to look uh, nasty 
we're going to want to look them as clean as possible and for that we are going to use one high impact animation and one very subtle or in this case only one animation if you want to more more about so if you want to keep uh, the balance and uh, how to create a great uh, projection mappings instead of only good ones I'll uh, link uh, my other tutorial in the top right corner and in the description below so for the bag I'm going to use something that will pop in this case I'm going to use the Gunsfield effect and for the label itself we only want to emphasize it and to do that we are going to use a solid color now why would we want to do that because by creating a solid color of white we are actually putting as much light as possible on the label it's like pointing a flashlight to an object in order to emphasize it it's the same uh, idea that uh, it's going on for example in theaters when they want to focus on one of the actors and as you can see here this is not great but as i already told you before because we created the coffee bag as good as we did we can now move the coffee label beneath it and this will make it work perfectly so let's see what we created great so now we are going to tackle the bottle of wine and here I am going to because this is a very reflective surface I'm going to use only the label and I'm going to create a mask for the whole bottle in order to hide things behind it so I'm going to start by using the brush all right so through the magic of editing I created the wine bottle and I also used the preview in order to make the make it as close as possible to, to the bottle itself and then I created using the brush tools I created the wine label and as you can see they are not the same shape as the label itself but here is the good part we do not need to make it pixel perfect in this case because the wine bottle itself is black it absorbs the light so our only concern is the left and the right edges here we only need to fill the the label themselves with white and we are good to go as you can see it's more than perfect now here is something a little bit quirky when it comes to the quirk of the wine bottle. We can make it once again or we can uh, take advantage of something that it was recently added to the Lightform Creator and that is also very important always save your file because if Lightform crashes and you didn't save you are going to lose your progress. So going back to the wine bottle the Kirk we are going to use intersect surfaces in order to create this area how are we going to do that so we're going first to duplicate the wine bottle surface and then we are going to create let's zoom in here we're going to create a simple rectangle just that it covers the top then the bottom and also the left and the right side of the cork and not go beneath here so only this area but make sure that it covers all of it and now what we are going to do is we are going to intersect them and what will that do is first go to the this surface and then uh, see what it has in common with this one 
and that will be our new created surface. So we are going to select both of these surfaces using the command or the control on Windows. And then we are going to select right clicks and select merge surfaces. And here under the path, we are going to select intersect. Let's rename it. And let's apply the same effect and see where it lands. So yeah, that's perfect. Let's preview this and see what we got. Great. So right now we have both of the effects. As you can see, they are the same theme. Gans field for the parts that are not important and just solid white color for the labels in order for them to pop. This is also a design principle. You don't want to go with too many colors, too many mentions, too many fonts. Just stick to two or three and repeat them. That repetition is going to provide the coherent fact on your entire project. Now, what we want to create are the two surfaces we are going to put either the menu or the video. And we are going to do them using another technique that I'm going to show you right now. So first, we are going to select the rectangle tool. Then we are going to come from, let's say, this spot. Make sure that we are not going beneath this because here is where our table is. So leave a little room to breathe and go over the bag itself. This is not going to be a problem, something like this. And we want to create a border, but in case of light form, we can't create borders. We don't have a specific tool to create them. So we're going to use a technique. First, we are going to once again, rename the surface. Here, we are going to apply, once again, a solid color of white. And once again, there is a question when you want to create a new surface and when we want to duplicate it. In this case, if you want to make it the same, only change one or two parameters, you want to duplicate. If you want to do something entirely different, maybe the best case will be to create an entire new surface. So here we are going to duplicate it using the right click, duplicate. This I'm going to name Coffee Inner. And here is the fun part. How are we going to create the border? So we created this first surface, fill it with white. And then the second surface, which is exactly on top because it's duplicated it we are going to fill with solid color. But in this case, this is my mistake. So because I duplicated the surface, I also get all the effects that are applied to that surface. So we don't need to with another solid color, we just need to change this to black. What this will do is it will just remove what we already did with the coffee outer surface. But we don't want to hide everything. We want to only hide 99% of it. And we are going to use the offset 
and not the scale or the um, or the position because by offsetting and creating a negative one pixel we are going to basically make it a little bit smaller but from the center so i don't know if you can see we have this surface let's hide it for a second this surface which has white color and on top of it we have the same surface but filled with black and offset with two pixels this allows us to create this effect of white border and let's see how this looks great so in order to fix this problem of uh, this area where we're going to put the text or the video we just need to move the coffee bag and the label to the top and once again make sure that the coffee bag is on top of the coffee label in order to have this fine-tuned edge okay now how are you going to create the second one once again we can create a new rectangle but uh, it will be very difficult to make it almost like this so the best solution once again because we want something that is almost exactly as this but only the position to be different we are going to duplicate it rename the surface and then selecting the move tool we are going to use the arrows and press shift and the right right will move one pixel at a time and shift we're going to move five pixel at a time make it look symmetrical like this now this is the wine outer and once again we are going to duplicate it wine inner make the solid color black and then offset by negative two pixels in order to create the, the border and once again we are going to move this to be below the, the wine bottle but make sure that wine inner is on top of wine outer because otherwise this will not work and here in order to make sure that all this edge will be covered we are going to fill the wine bottle with once again a solid color of black save it and once again let's see what we created so this is looking dandy and right now we can actually because we have all the surfaces we are going to work with we can duplicate this slide let's rename this coffee menu and the other one will be wine menu and once again we are going to name this slide now let's get back to only the cuff menu here we're going to hit this eye and doing so we're going to disable the publishing of this slide because we are going to focus only on this one so in order to create our coffee menu we are going to use our coffee inner surface and we are going to apply to the the surface itself we're going to apply a text we are going to align it to the right make it smaller let's say 70 and uh, 
Another design principle when dealing with borders and limits is never put things right at the edge. Let them breathe. As you can see here, this does look very beautiful. So what we are going to do, we are going to change the, the Y axis. This is uh, the vertical line and um, let's go with 60 and for the horizontal line, let's go with minus 40. And here we are going to create our first item. Let's say espresso $1. So uh, I'm already seeing that um, the size is a bit too much. Okay, this looks good. Now, once again, in order to create the other text, we can go here and make it once again, but we actually want the same horizontal position, only the vertical one to, to be different and also the text. So we are going to put here this to be the espresso, so we know which text this corresponds to. Duplicate it. Here, let's say Cortado and Cortado, if you don't know, is an espresso with very little milk foam on top. And uh, in order to move it, we are going to change the Y like this. Let's say $2. This is Cortado. And we are going to do the same for the others. So this is the coffee menu and I use the dots in order to also align it to the left because this will uh, make it look better and let's see the result. And in order to make this even more pop than a normal bar menu, we are going to leverage this part which is wine inner and we are going to apply a video. Videos are the most um, easy way to make things pop and don't be shy to use them. Even though we have such great effect in generators here, video is highly underrated in my opinion. And I already browsed the catalog. This is something that is very amazing. We have a lot of stock footage available for us. So I own, I searched for coffee and I downloaded the appropriate one. In this case, this. So we're going to insert into this surface. And here is something that we also need to take into consideration. This video is 25 seconds long, but this uh, coffee menu is only 10. As I already told you in my other tutorial, the speed of the effects, this also applies here. So in order to make it seamless as possible, we're going to click the video and we're going to set slide duration. And this will change our slide duration in order to accommodate the whole video. And another thing is we are going to put fade in and fade out. One more thing, because we want to, before making this slide final, we want to only emphasize the coffee part. So in this case, we want to hide the label and also the cork. So let's see what our coffee menu is going to look like. So this is great. This is the coffee menu. It's over and because we already prepared all the surfaces, doing the wine menu here is going to be so much easier. Because I want to explain as much as possible, but not make this tutorial longer than it has to be, I am just going to fast forward this part because there is nothing new on the wine slide. 
I am just using the same surfaces, I'm using the exact same techniques and creating it. And I think we are done. So let's see the final result. Wow, what a long tutorial. If you find it useful, give it a thumbs up so more people will see it. Also, tell me in the comment section what other light form tutorials we will want to see next. And if you want to support me and learn more, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Until next time, see ya!